Four, seven goals. <laughs> some performance. Who missed? <laughs> that must have been someone that missed. We should Some, go back over that it. That finisher out there. Yeah. Oh, that is ruthless. That's the word that, that Jordan Henderson just used, ruthless. And it was. And don't get me wrong, when, you, when you're three, four, five, you relax and it's, it's almost sort of uh, easier to score a goal. It's harder when the pressure's on, you know, and you need to score. It's last minute or a tight situation. But as soon as you get a couple of goals up, much more relaxing. And, uh, and you can see that in Liverpool's play. You know, they're able to bring on some top-class players as well. And, and when you do that... You know, if you're 3-0 up and the players are out there and they've always been on the pitch, so sometimes you can think, right, let's just, we've killed the game. Let's. But when you introduce players, mm. it almost gives them a chance of, hang on a minute, I want to be part of this. And, and they sort of, you hand over the baton and they continue. And that's why there were so many goals, I think, today. As for John Henderson's goal, Owen, was it the least he deserved after the performance he put in today? I thought all the Liverpool players played great. I mean, the front three were, were outrageous. Minamino played great. Trent, just the weight of this ball from Trent's perfect. But I love that from Henderson because when, when this is set back to him, it makes Jordan's mind up exactly what he wants. You know, he just knows in that position there, he's just going to creep up. And if Trent hits this too hard, he has to take a touch. But you see, with all the bodies they have in there, mm. there's not enough players out to come and mark Jordan at the edge of the box. Look at that. I mean, it's, this is like, you almost like take it as a free kick. Literally, that's what he does. And because Trent passes are perfect, he can whip it like a free kick. And Jordan pictured that before it came, the ball, and it went in. And it's a beautiful thing as a player when you, when you think of something and then it comes off. I was just, I was just going to say, he, uh, I've seen you score a few of those so as soon as it was getting rolled back. But to be honest, Trent's ball almost told him everything, didn't yeah. it? The weight of the pass, it was just saying to him, yeah. hit it hit first it. time. Yeah. yeah, And that's it, it's different now. There's no fans, so you can hear people talking. Certainly Jordan Henderson, you can hear them, him talking during a game. Mm. But... The ball, 99 times out of 100, the weight of the pass, the angle of the pass, that is your you know, communication on a football pitch because normally you can't hear anything. No. And that ball was just telling him, hit me, score, yeah. score with this one. Before the game, we were speaking about maybe the risk of dressing room disharmony with the fact that Mohamed Salah started on the bench. But when Salah did come on from Sadio Mane, what do you make of Mane's reaction? <laughs> Normal. Um, normal, yeah, you're right. It's normal, but it just shows you how hard it is to keep a, a happy camp as a, as a manager. And that's why we mentioned before, we had a long debate, 10 minutes or something, we were talking about this type of situation. Uh, he's absolutely fuming coming off. I mean, the game is over. <laughs> you know, the manager's only doing it for his benefit. Everything is perfect in many ways, but that just shows you the hunger. Now, that would only... If he'd done that to Firmino that would have been fine. He would have walked off, smile on his face, given high fives to everyone. But people like Salah, people like Mane, they're made of different type of things. And we've seen that already, haven't we? During yeah. their time together at Liverpool. Definitely. They are fiercely competitive. And I would argue that you can't score the number of goals that they score mm. without having that attitude. Firmino will score 10, 12, 14 goals a season with a happy attitude. He'll love to assist and, and you could argue you know, whether he has as much influence on the game as, as other players. But he will never, ever score the goals that Mane and Salah scored because, because of that. That's How true. you've just watched him walking off, that is hunger. That is just, I, I've got half an hour to go. Why are you bring? I, I want to score more. And I bet you as soon as he comes off and he sees Salah scoring and everyone else scoring, he's boiling even more. What will Klopp think of that? Uh, he won't mind as long as they win 7-0. <laughs> but the point is, that's why Firmino plays. Yeah. Because you can't have too many of those boys yeah. in there where it's, all, it's about them. Yeah? So the boys want the numbers, I get that, that's fine. You know, Salah's earned the right to want to, to wanna keep scoring and to play. Mane has as well, he's been one of the best players in the league. But that's why Firmino plays. He's so unselfish. You know, he's not worried about all that stuff. He, as Mo said, he's not giving any reactions, he's not showing anything. So it's great that you got Salah and you got Mane, you got them in there. But Bobby is kind of the guy that keeps that harmony in there. And then you've got Jordan Henderson and you've got Milner. You've got guys that aren't really in it for themselves. So it's a great blend, but you need a special manager to go, right, lads, calm down a little bit, you know, tone down the reactions a little bit. They're lucky as well, aren't they, that Firmino, at the position he plays, he actually splits the two of them. So he keeps them, he keeps them more apart. selfish <laughs> players as far apart as possible. Yeah. Uh, talking of Firmino, we spoke about his cheeky finish in the first half. What about the nonchalance behind his second? Well, again, it's, uh, it's a great finish. I love the way Liverpool just sprint out from a defensive point of view. They sprint out um, rather like Firmino's first goal. There's a real intent there. 
And I would point out as well the, the role Minamino plays in this because he actually shifts his man just a yard. See that? Just a yard or two, the, his, his man moves. And when you look at the, the outcome, he's only about a yard off tackling for Mino in the end. So, oh, don't get me wrong, that finish is just gorgeous. It's one of yours, Michael. I did like, maybe not on my left foot so many times, <laughs> yeah. but definitely the, the style. I did like the dink finish. But I just loved the way Minamino could have just sat back and thought, oh, I'm not going to get this. But he actually makes a diagonal run, takes his man just a couple of yards, and that freed up the gap for, for Salah to play in Firmino. What a day in the end, then, for the Liverpool boss. Here is Jurgen Klopp. Bridge finisher, to say the least. Yeah. He got better at Roma. Even at Liverpool, when he first came, you could see he was, he was getting better. He was much better than when he was at Chelsea. Um, now he has just turned into an unbelievably accomplished finisher. Very rarely wastes chances always picks the right finish, whether he slides it, whether he's outside the box, he's got power, he's got guile, he can dink, he can take the ball around the goalkeeper. He's pretty accomplished now in front of goal. Owen, do you think he felt he had a point to prove coming off the bench? No, I just think he wants to be the top goal scorer in the Premier League. You, mm. you know, then that's the point. And that's why he doesn't want to be rested, because all of a sudden before, if he was like a squad player like he was at Chelsea, mm. he probably would accept accepted being rested at times. Now, like Mo, when he was in his prime, you, you want to you wanna be at the top of the chart scoring goals. He's there. What, he had 11 before the game? You know, he's, he's currently top as well. Exactly. So he's right at the, And then he gets two more. You know, this is an opportunity for him to get, you know, I think in his last three or four games, he's, you know, in four, he scored four every game and he had three assists. So this is a team that he knows he gets goals. And sit on the bench, he can affect the game. So I, I, I agree with Mo. I like the fact that he, you know, that he... He knows there's goals in this and he just doesn't want to sit on the bench and watch. Yeah, two clear in the scoring charts, Calvert-Lewin next, and then, of course, it's Son. Talking about going clear, six points clear at the top. Who was your standout player today? Their, you know, their injury well, problems. I mean, you this know, is there were, there were quite just a, so many, uh, a response you know, from Liverpool, again, isn't it? In the blink of an eye as well. Um, I think everyone midfield. was quite tight. You, you know, know, the, the league was looking is, I um, still really think tight. I would go for Fabinho. I don't know Even how many did make a mistake. teams have, have when he was been, muscle, you know, top of the league and, 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 uh, in this short season so far. But Liverpool all of a sudden put a bit of life between themselves and the pack. Of course, Manchester United got a game in hand. They could be the nearest pursuers after this weekend. But you know why? Because we're not talking about... About I think you're going going into Christmas, six points clear as we stand today, will be absolutely buzzing because it was looking quite tight. He has got lots of injuries. He's put the Champions League to bed now. That's OK until, until February right now. Concentrate on the, on the Premier League and that's what they're doing. And look at those next two games in particular, West Brom and Newcastle. A decent chance to extend that lead as well, Owen. Yeah, you'd, you'd expect so. West Brom and Newcastle, obviously not going to be easy with... Big Sam going in at West Brom, and you know how they're going to play, and they're going to sit deep. But Newcastle, obviously, you fancy them. Southampton are a fabulous team, you know, so that would be a proper game as well in United. But, you know, you expect... Look, every time Liverpool roll up to play, you expect them to win. It doesn't matter who the opposition is. that They dominate virtually every phase of the game. Possession, mm. shots, everything. So if they're ruthless like they were today, scoring seven from eight shots on target, you can't beat them. And just to recap the three goals that were scored in the first half at Selhurst Park, Takumi Minamono making his fourth Premier League start for Liverpool. Um, he did well, didn't he? Two minutes and seven seconds in, Minamino got them uh, up and running. He certainly did, yeah, and it's exactly the start that he would have wanted because if you don't play often, it's, uh, you, know, you want to feel part of it. This is where Trent is so good. He spots that, that Cahill's just come out of position and Sadio Mane as well. You know, as soon as a, a defender makes a false move, gives you a space, then he's right in there capitalising on that. He does well, he, you know, he brings Minamino into the game. And, and again, he could have shot early, but he had the presence of mind to take that touch and, and finish it. Sadio Mane has this thing about playing Palace. He's now scored in his last seven games against the South London side after this effort. You like this, Owen, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, the thing is about the Liverpool players, the attackers, they get, you know, they, you see their... Kuyatis tries to step up, get the line is, but look, that, that's not a back four line that you want. You know, there's two different lines, and then they just get crisscross Kuyatis and Cahill, who had a really tough day at it, to be fair to Credit Bobby Firmino, great little slide into Mane. And they're so, they're so precise in these areas there. You just see Kuyatis there, he just doesn't know what to do. He's trying to put out fires, but there's too many to put out, and Liverpool just, they're so clinical. The quality of the touches in those tight areas was top draw today. And the fact that Firmino got the third goal in that first half, 
How delighted will Klopp be that that front three all got on the score sheet in the first 45? Exactly that, yeah. It's nice when you spread them round. Look at the pace of the, the three front men here, breaking. Um, you know, they're all sprinting forward. They don't give Crystal Palace a chance to reorganise themselves. And here, the two centre-halves, again, there's a big gap between them. I think Cahill's got to see that. Think, right, OK, I'm on my man at the back post, but the danger is in front of me. He just leaves it. I mean, sometimes you just have to leave your own man and, and, and go and try to put out a fire. But he just watches, and Firmino's touch is just unbelievable. That, he, he makes it look easy. The ball bounces in front of him with a bit of pace on, and he kills it, Dad. Brilliant finish. And he doesn't get one on uh, Robertson at the end with that. <laughs> He's going to catch someone at all. But, you know, you said about how Klopp will love the fact that he got his front three to score in the first half. Seven different assist makers today as well. I mean, you don't often see that, Owen, do you? Well, no. I mean, we, we normally think of Liverpool, we think of the assists they come from, they come from Alexander Arnold and they come from Robertson. Yeah. I mean, that is a remarkable. That one there from Robertson, that puts him level with Kevin De Bruyne since the start of the 2018 19 season for the most assists in the Premier League on 28 each. From a fullback, that's from incredible. A fullback. We're talking about the best player in the Premier League, by the way, Kevin De Bruyne. He's, he's put himself on the same level in terms of providing goals, which is his job, but De Bruyne's job, by the way. I mean, Robertson is a fullback, and he's still doing that. So if they can get production in terms of assists from, from Robertson and from Alexander-Arnold, you know, and then they can get him from all these other players in there, Minamino and Firmino and Mane, then Liverpool are just scary. One word on Crystal Palace, Michael. One of the Rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> not quite literally. But we were saying before the game how they're not often overturned quite easily. No. I mean, you know, that is one that I suppose, do they just move on from? Or is it something that... Quickly. Yeah. Yeah, they'll have to move on quickly. As you say, I think they'll be able to move on quickly.